everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pastor Mike's Quick Shots. Now, I want you to know that I, um, my energy level is, is going to be hopefully high enough today to get through this whole thing. And uh, my October is full. I have like a, I have a wedding this weekend. I have uh, upcoming uh, three weekends of class. I have assignments that are going to be due and yet still do two charge conferences for two different churches and still keep everything else on a weekly basis rolling and moving like it always does. So I'm going to try my best to get sleep when I can to take care of myself and then to make sure that I stay in my prayer life and in my study. As you may know from last week, my study time right now is coming from Unshakable Hope from Max Lucado. And so we've really, he's really been kind of going through all of these things and all of these scenarios. And one of the things that we often forget, the thing that really sets us apart uh, and, and as a religion or as a belief system is Christianity, is that we believe that Jesus Christ was the incarnation of God. He was fully human, fully man. He, he felt everything that, that, that human beings feel and, and yet died and was risen from the grave. The tomb is empty. We talked about that a lot the last couple of weeks. With the tomb being empty, Jesus ascends to heaven and he sends back the Holy Spirit. Now, if that doesn't show you a little bit of how much God loves you, think of it this way. Here is God in human form could have done anything he wanted to get this result that he currently has. And instead, what he chose was he chose to give up his life to be the once for all sacrificial lamb. And then he decided not to stay dead, but that he would come back. But then he loved us so much that rather than be back with us physically, he ascends to heaven and he sends back the Holy Spirit and tells the disciples, you're going to do greater things than I can do. I don't know about you, but I have trouble believing that we can do greater things than what Jesus did. And to, in this week's study, uh, Max Lucado, he tries to do um, the after, right? So just before Jesus ascends to, ascends to heaven, he leaves this promise with his disciples. This comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but me personally, I don't know if I'm equipped for that. I don't know if I really do have the ability. I can be a witness. Yes, I can tell about him to people everywhere, but I don't know what that means or what that looks like. What does it mean or look like if I am living in the spirit the way that Jesus is telling these disciples and telling me today that the spirit will live within me? Now, we did this last year for uh, DeGraff's uh, First Wednesday Kids Club. We talked about the fruits of the Spirit. So Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, he's trying to tell them, and he's trying to tell us, what does it look like when the Spirit is living out of me, through me, to the world? In Galatians 5, chapter 22, verses, or chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, he says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. Basically, Paul is telling them that if you are living a life that is reflective of the spirit that dwells within you, these are the attributes that the world around you will see. So are people seeing that love? Are they seeing peace, patience, goodness, kindness? Are they seeing all of these things in you? 
or are they seeing a reflection of what the world is putting in your mind and in your body? Max Lucado goes on to say this in his devotional this week for me. Don't overlook the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need his help, strength, and direction. How do you get this? By keeping, quote, in step with the Spirit, end quote. It comes from Galatians 5.25. How do you know if you are in step? Here is the cue. Look to the fruit of the Spirit. Those emotions are indicators on your spiritual dashboard. You have access to the same hand that pushed the rock from the tomb. The same power that stirred the heart of Christ can stir your flagging faith. The same strength that puts Satan on his heels and will defeat Satan in your life. Make it your aim to sense, see, and hear the fruit of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to start looking for the fruits of the Spirit in my life. It makes me want to stop looking at the world from this lens of negativity, from this lens of defeat, from this place of I don't have enough, or I'm not good enough, or I better come clean before I get there enough. We, we have to get out of that mindset. We have to live with the Spirit. But how are we going to get those cues? How are we going to pick up those cues and know if God is speaking those things into our life or not? But we've got to have a study life. We've got to have a prayer life. We've got to be in relationship with God. And it's Jesus who makes us right with that God that we can have that relationship to begin with. I love it what Paul says. He says this to the, to the Corinthians in this first letter, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. He says, some of you were once like that. Speaking about you were broken. You were obsessed with the world. You were worldly. You were immoral. All these things. But he says, you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Friends, I have a hallelujah for you today. I have an amen for you today. There is nothing that you can do that is going to fix all the broken parts and all the problems of your life. The circumstances will not change. They might get better because of prayer and because you're lining up with God in that prayer, but the circumstances of your life are not going to change. What is going to change and what can change is your heart and whether or not you are engaged in that spiritual life so that you can experience God in a way that you keep reading about, but you don't know what it is. Friends, our lives have to look more like Jesus than it does the world. We have got to stop getting our information, stop getting our, our personal evaluation from, from our Instagram or from our social media. We've got to stop getting things from other people to make us feel certain ways about ourselves. We have got to believe in this God that we love, that even though the cancer may not be gone, even though the healing may not take place, even though the things of this world may not get better, praise God, Jesus died on a cross and saved me that I might have a new heaven and a new earth to look forward to that is so much better than this. I can't wait. I can't wait to get there, even in the midst of it. I remember reading in Unshakable Hope that there's a, a Russian prisoner named Dmitri. He's arrested several times because he believes in Christianity, because he believes in this Jesus, and it's not welcome in Russia. He gets to a point where he's been in prison for so long, he sings praises every morning, and the other prisoners mock him and laugh. The guards poke fun. They finally get to a point where they want to break his spirit. And they tell him that his family has, his, his wife has been murdered. And his children are now wards of the state. If you will just sign away your belief in Jesus, your belief in this Christianity, we'll let you go to be with your children. 
He said he finally breaks after the beatings, after the abuse, he finally breaks. And he says, okay, I will. And they said, great, we'll, we'll get the document signed, drawn up and we'll bring it to you tomorrow to sign. The whole night, Dimitri is praying. He is praying so hard and so fervently that God, I need to know if my family is safe. I need to know if my family is okay. And I believe you, no matter what you tell me, I believe you. I believe that you can do anything. He prays from a place, not of eloquence, not of, I've, oh, I'm so clean. Look at how great my life is. Oh, look at how good I've been doing in prison, still following you and praising you in my, in my storm. No. He comes from a place of pure need and humility. God, I need you. I cannot face this without you. I need you to show up. Little does Dimitri know that about that time, his family, they're fine and they're all at home. And each one of them gets this, sudden urge to pray for their father and husband. And so as a family, they gather around in a circle and they begin to just pray in the spirit. God, I don't know what's happening with Dimitri, but I know that you need him and I know that he needs you. God, we just pray that you would protect him, guard him and bring him home to us. In that moment, Dimitri, thousands of kilometers away, is sitting in a cell and he hears the voice of his family praying for him. He knows they're okay, and he knows that they're safe. The ward, the warden comes in the next day with the papers ready for, for Dimitri to sign. Ha <laughs> ha, we got him. And Dimitri stands in sheer defiance. And he stands proud. And he says, no, I don't think I'm going to sign your papers today. You see, you've lied to me. I know my family is safe because my God is keeping them safe. I know that I will be safe because my God is keeping me safe. Jesus is the reason that we are all safe. This breaks and everyone in the prison has no idea how he knows this information. They have no idea how he stands with such firm conviction and they break instead. The prisoners begin to cheer. The prison guards begin to wonder if what they're doing is even right. And it wouldn't be but a few months later that Dimitri would get released. After Dimitri is released from prison, the song that Dimitri sang every morning, praising his God, it became a song of every one of those prisoners every day. Friends, we may not be in prison and we may not be getting beaten for our faith, but there are things that we are allowing to beat us up inside. There's things that we are allowing to take over our lives. And friends, I know that the Holy Spirit can do this. I know that the Holy Spirit is there. I have felt it. I have seen it and I've experienced it. You may not think that you need him. You may think you've got life under control, but I'm telling you right now, there is nothing in this life worth it, and there's nothing in this life that means more than that relationship with God. I hope and pray that you will stand firm in this encouragement. You will seek out the Spirit, seek out those fruits. We're going to talk a little bit more about that this Sunday, uh, 9 a.m. in Maplewood at 1030 in the graph. We're going to talk about those fruits of the Spirit, how they turn, and how our living like the, living in the light of Christ how living in the light can show other people what Christ looks like. I hope and pray that you are experiencing peace, that the Holy Spirit is with you, and that you are encouraged today. I just hope so much that the Spirit is moving in you the way that it's moving in me. Friends, have a great rest of your week, and don't worry, it's going to get better. I promise. Thank you, friends, and have a good week. See you later. Bye-bye.